Welcome to the Land House channel. I'm Seth. Today I have the Ampeak 12 volt, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. Ampeak did send this per my request. I'm gonna be using this to install in my future studio space to do a lot of testing with batteries and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what this inverter is all about. Now I've used the Ampeak products before and they have worked very well so definitely looking forward to giving this one a try all right so it is packaged with some foam and it has a protective plastic cover over it here Let's see if i can get this out of here inside the box you get the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter you also have a 14 millimeter wrench to access the bolts on the terminals here it has a nice, it looks like four gauge, well it's 20 millimeter cable for uh, connecting to your battery. And then it has a user manual, which I'll read over real quick and see what's in there. All right, let's take a tour around this inverter. Let's take a tour around this inverter real quick. Has the Ampeak logo, 2000 watt, pure sine wave inverter. Has a display to show you the voltage of your battery and output of the unit. Conforms to UL458. The input range for the voltage is 11 volts to 15 volts, which means it will work with a lithium iron phosphate battery at 14.6 volts. The output AC is 105 volts to 125 volts, 60 hertz. And it does have USB, uh, 5 volts, 3.1 amps. All right, if I turn over to this side right here, you can see that it has the power switch on and off down here, three typical US plugs, it's got the cigarette lighter type plug there. Down here, you can connect a remote control to have this uh, turn on or off through a switch. Here's your two USBs down here. And then the whole side over here has uh, ventilation. Over here, you can see it's got the mounting locations for some screws. And back here on this side, you've got a small grounding uh, bolt right there. And then here is where you would access your terminals. So you can use the wrench in here to loosen up these caps and then access the actual uh, terminal bolts there. And so it's nice to have that included wrench so you can adjust that and put your cables in. So very nice. This is the same as the other side. And then up underneath, there is some information about this as well as some warnings. I've got a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery that I'm gonna hook up to the Ampeak 2000 watt inverter. So the first thing I want to do here is remove these plastic caps here that will free up the terminals. Get that one off of there. Now the instruction booklet says you can undo these by hand or you can use the included wrench. And of course, once you get to this stage, you'll probably have to use the included wrench to get those loosened up. All right, I have those terminals free now. What I'm gonna do is take the black and the red leads here. I looked it up and 20 millimeter is approximately a four gauge cable. So that should be sufficient to run this amount of amperage through here. Black cable goes to the negative. Red cable goes to the positive. Whenever you connect an inverter or a battery to the cables, make sure there's no washer between the bottom of the terminal and the uh, cable. Otherwise, there'll be uh, some resistance there. All right, make sure those are nice and tight. Now I'm gonna connect the black cable to the battery terminal. But before I connect the inverter to the battery with the positive, I'm gonna use a resistor. I've got a 10 watt, 100 ohm resistor, and that is going to charge up the battery's capacitors so that it's not gonna have a pop or spark in here. If you don't do that, it can uh, give up the magic smoke and you don't want that. So I'm gonna touch the terminals here, touch this, and give it a second or two. That should be enough. So now, whoop, 
Still got a spark. Maybe it wasn't quite long enough. Let's turn this inverter on and see what the display shows. I'm gonna press the power button. The Ampeak logo shows up here on the screen. Let's see what we got here. The input voltage is 13.0 volts, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The output is 120 volts, zero amps, 60 hertz, and currently is showing zero watts out. All right, let's go ahead and go big. I've got an angle grinder here that I'm gonna turn on, and that should allow us to pull a significant amount of watts out of this inverter. I was seeing about 440 watts being pulled by that angle grinder. I plugged up a heater, which will run at 1400 watts and the angle grinder. So we can turn both of these on at the same time and see how close we get to tripping the over protection here. There we go. We got 1,460 watts. There we go. Triggered it. All right, let's turn that off real quick. Turn the inverter off, turn it back on, see what we get here. I may have to disconnect the battery in order to reset this. All right, see if that works. <laughs> I may have already killed this thing. That would be so sad. I unplugged everything. I touched the resistor between the positive and negative, and let's see if that's gonna cause it to come back on. Yep, there we go. Okay, so uh, whenever I overloaded this circuit, I had to disconnect these, turn the power on and off, and I even uh, connected my resistor between the positive and negative terminals to make sure everything was dissipated. So anyway, back up and running now. So. We know that the overload protection is going to trigger and it's going to cause the unit to shut off and you can't turn it back on until you have uh, basically reset everything. Nice, okay, let's go ahead and test out the uh, cigarette lighter and also the USB ports over here. I've got a little air compressor here that uses a lot of amperage. I'm gonna plug this up to the 12 volt cigarette lighter over here. All right, the basic fan came on. Let's see, I don't see an output for the DC here. Let me turn this on and see if it works. Yeah, seems to do just fine. All right, well that works well. The last output to test is the USB over here. Let me plug this up. I've got a little flashlight that I want to charge. All right, different cable, and I've got a battery here to charge. Let's go ahead and get this done, see if it'll work. Okay, yeah. All right, it's gonna be impossible for you to see that, but the little light has come on here, so that is working. All right, must have been that flashlight that was the problem. All right, well good. Every feature of this inverter is now working properly. So far, I am pleased with the operation of the Ampeak 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I did check the user manual for the uh, safety protections. There's actually two pages of them on this list here. It's got uh, battery low voltage, battery high voltage, overload for the AC, overcurrent, short circuit, overheat, overcool. It's got uh, low voltage for um, the inverter. It's got uh, DC overload, DC overcurrent, and then some information on the uh, no display. Um, but it's supposed to have an alarm that beeps for the uh, overload, but in this case, it just shut the display off. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but. Anyway, I was able to uh, bring it back to life by just turning it off and disconnecting the power. So if you want to check out more information on the Ampeak 2000 watt inverter, I will have a link to this in the description down below. Now you will be seeing this again here on the channel as I'm gonna be using this inverter for future tests. So definitely be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can get more updates on this type of product. I'm Seth with Landa House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.